Good morning. Good morning, Father Rob from Church of the Holy Spirit here. At least I hope that's the page I'm broadcasting on. Got up this morning and tried to get ready for morning prayer and the computer wasn't uh, cooperating. So we switched over to the cell phone. So I, I hope that you can hear me okay um, as we get started. And I think I have all my ducks in a row for uh, prayer this morning. But it is good to be with you. Uh, did want to shut a few things down over here so the computer isn't misbehaving during morning prayer. Um, yay, got at least one person watching. Um, hi. <laughs> um, as I furiously rushed to try to get the computer to behave, finally I just gave in and decided we'll try it with a cell phone this morning, so hopefully you can hear well. Um, as always, uh, morning prayer comes from the Book of Common Prayer, and uh, it begins right around um, page 75. Our opening acclamation is actually on page 78, so that's where we will begin this morning. Um, sorry that uh, I don't have the scriptures posted. Um, that's normally something I try to do and, and have um, links and all of that, but uh, wasn't able to pull that off this morning. So, but that's okay. Um, if you are getting yourself situated, um, we will begin in just a moment, and then I will give you the scripture readings as we go along. Okay. Well, um, let us go ahead and get started on page 78. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm appointed this morning comes from Psalm 119. Psalm 119, beginning at verse 49. Psalm 119, verse 49. Remember your word 
to your servant, because you have given me hope. It is my comfort in my trouble that your promise gives me life. The proud have derided me cruelly, but I have not turned from your law. When I remember your judgments of old, O Lord, I take great comfort. I am filled with a burning rage because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been like songs to me wherever I have lived as a stranger. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and dwell upon your law. This is how it has been with me, because I have kept your commandments. You only are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to keep your words. I entreat you with all my heart. Be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and turned my feet toward your decrees. I hasten and do not tarry to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked entangle me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I will rise to give you thanks because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your commandments. The earth, O Lord, is full of your love. Instruct me in your statutes. O Lord, you have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word. Teach me discernment and knowledge, for I have believed in your commandments. Before I was afflicted and I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and you bring forth good. Instruct me in your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart is gross and fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than thousands in gold and silver. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading comes from the book of Joshua, chapter 8. Joshua, chapter 8, beginning with verse 30. Then Joshua built on Mount Ebal an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel. Just as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of unhewn stones on which no iron tool has been used. And they offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed offerings of well-being and there in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua wrote on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he had written. All Israel, alien as well as citizen, with their elders and officers and their judges, stood on opposite sides of the ark in front of the Levitical priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord, half of them in front of Mount Gerizim, and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded at first that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward he read all the words of the law, blessings and curses, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded that Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel and the women and the little ones and the aliens who resided among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 14. Romans 14, beginning at verse 13. Let us therefore no longer pass judgment on one another, but resolve instead never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of another. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, 
but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it is unclean. If your brother or sister is being injured by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. Do not let what you eat cause the ruin of one for whom Christ died. Do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The one who thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and has human approval. Let us then pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Do not, for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for you to make others fall by what you eat. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that makes your brother or sister stumble. The faith that you have, have as your own conviction before God. Blessed are those who have no reason to condemn themselves because of what they approve. But those who have doubts are condemned if they eat, because they do not act from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The final reading comes from Matthew 26. Matthew 26, beginning with verse 57. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to them, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming in on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? And they answered, He deserves death. And they spat on his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who is it that struck you? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's at this time that we continue by reciting together the Apostles' Creed found on page 96. Let us recite together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The collect this morning comes from the 11th proper, found on page 231. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now our collect for grace. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is at this time that we take a moment to share our own intercessions and prayers. I'll give us about a minute and then I'll close us in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us. We thank you for the blessings of life and for the hope that we have in glory. Lord, we offer up our hearts to you this morning, asking you to fill us with your spirit again and again, that we may sense your presence, that we may um, have greater hope and faith in you, and then that your light would shine through us into the lives of others. Lord, we pray for um, those around us. We pray for those who do not know you. We pray that you would open eyes to your faith. Lord, would you um, bring newness of life um, to all those who are near us and then beyond. Lord, we pray for our country and for our city, our neighborhoods, for your gospel to go forth, that it would bring hope and life and peace to people's hearts. We also pray for those who are um, in need this morning, those who are 
sick or sad or recovering in any way. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, especially recently, Lord, that you would give grace and peace, that you would help um, that you would help the loved ones of the lost, Lord, to find strength and hope in you. And I pray that you would remind us to always look forward to glory, that we would trust that one day uh, we would be renewed and restored and redeemed um, in new bodies walking this earth with you in your presence. We thank you for glory and the hope that is in that promise. Um, in the meantime, strengthen us for the tasks you have for us, for the challenges, for the joys, um, and help us to follow you. We ask all of this in Christ's precious name. Amen. And now for our prayer of general thanksgiving, found on page 101. Let's pray together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and to all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. Hey, Bob, good to see you there. Um, and all the rest who joined this morning, it is a pleasure to spend a little time in prayer and in, um, in study with you this morning. So be blessed. Have a wonderful day. And remember, God is still on his throne. He is in charge of all of this and everything is going to be okay. You can trust him. Um, walk in his peace today. Have a wonderful day. God bless.